Welcome to another episode of Review Advent Calendar 2022. This time around I'm going to review a song that I haven't listened to for a long time. This is yet another song that I haven't reviewed for a long time. And this is, or reviewed, let's say, I haven't listened to it for a long time. This is Takuya Sato's Hyokai. Well, now you may be asking, but Takuya Sato had a solo career? What? Yes, he did have a solo career. Albeit an underrated one and uh, underrated and overshadowed one, while most people were paying attention to say you artists that were debuting with or signed to major music labels, and he was signed to not. Uh, I would say I was signed to a minor music label or a music label that wasn't paying that much attention to his work or putting that much effort into making him a star. So. We are going to check Hyokai. It is a song that is quite nostalgic. It is a song performed by Takuya Sato, solo-wise. So for many of you, this may be the very first time that you are listening to this song. The songs by Takuya Sato are not available on streaming platforms, so you will have to either find it through, find it through weird means and in weird websites, or you will have to purchase the physical CD in order to have access to this song. So let's check this. This is almost a song from the vault from back in the day. I'm talking about a song from uh, 2017. It's been quite a while. Uh, that was a year in which many solo debuts arrived and... Uh, actually put some Seiyu that were already trying to launch their careers a bit on the back foot and Takuya Sato's career was one of those careers that actually got axed quite uh, quickly due to those solo debuts. So let's check Hyokai and see what this song is all about. <laughs> I remember saying that this song reminds me a lot about uh, Gazette Kasi, uh, and it is really because of that melancholic acoustic guitar sound that is really urgent and really sad at the same time, while being slow paced. And Hyokai starts really on that note, really slow but urgent at the same time. It's really emotional. You can tell that it's really emotion from the acoustic guitar melody and of course we are now going to make a big entrance to the first verse the higher pitched since give away that melancholy, give away that emotion. And the way that the guitars and the drums and the bass are somber, you know that this song is not going to be happy. At least tone-wise, it's not going to be happy at all. It's going to be quite emotional. And hopefully it has a performance to match that emotion. So far, it is a really good intro, a long intro. Most people will not stick around for a 30 plus second intro, but it is well worth, especially because this is a five minute long song. <laughs> As you can tell by the lyrics, if you are paying attention to those and you actually understand Japanese, the song is sad. He's actually saying to the bird to fly, fly away and move on. And this song already has a really melancholic touch and the lyrics add to it alongside a really 
weirdly somber performance by Takuya Sato. What I'm finding a bit weird in the mixing is that Takuya Sato is not that clear in the mix, which is to say, when you are listening to that verse, you notice that his voice and the guitars are almost in the same sound level. It's not ideal, and that's a bit messy in terms of the mixing, but hopefully the song manages to turn that around and overcome it in the chorus. Chords in minor key, once again, reinforcing that idea of melancholy. The vocals were a bit lower, now they are a bit higher than usual. It's norm the normal vocal range by Takuya Sato, or from Takuya Sato, uh, but as you may have noticed so far, the technicality that he now brings to his performances was not here, at least up until now. Really long note, really good long note in Legato after a really solid twist with the vibrato. really a song that lends a lot from visual K-rock from the late 90s, early noughties. It is undeniable that there are those influences, especially of emo rock and visual K-rock in this performance. It's not it, that it is flashy. It is a song that is really emotional and leads with those emotions in a really somber way that only visual K-rock usually does. Uh, it's not playing around with those emotions. It's not making you weep on purpose. It's really, really, really somber and it sticks with it and it flows with that somber vibe till the end. I really love the progression on the vocals and with the guitars in the chorus. It is a perfect build-up, in my opinion, in which there is a lot of cleanness on Takuya Sato's vocals and those guitars are really uh, melancholic and nostalgic for me in a way because much of the music that I listened to and much of the music that shaped me into the music reviewer that I now am is emo rock and visual K rock. So in a way, melancholy and the way melancholy is approached or nostalgia is approached is exactly the same way that it was back then. It's almost like a throwback to that era in terms of sound. So for me, it's already a massive plus because it sounds nostalgic, not only because of the lyrics, but because of the time period in the music uh, industry that it managed to capture and the sounds that it captured. I do love this a whole lot. I don't know why not many people clicked with it because this is a really somber song. Notice how that guitar is going really high pitch. That guitar is going uh, on with a little bit of an effect in that. That is making almost like it is weeping or crying in the background. It is ice cold in a way. It is brassy in 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 another. So it adds uh, an additional detail to this song. Of course, this is something that may not even be noticeable on a first listen, especially if you know the song 
itself and you are not really play, paying attention to the background. But still, you have that guitar really high-pitched in the background, almost sounding like it is a synth. It isn't. It is really on a high, high notes and with a lot of effect going on in there to make it reverb at you. Notice the bass line in this song and the bass on the drums. It is relentless. Boom, 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 boom. It's going on for a long time. It is the heart of this song. And you really can feel it, albeit softer than you would expect in this song. But it is right there. It is beating in the background. It is giving life to this song. And while you are paying attention to the guitars that are screaming at you while not necessarily screaming, uh, the bass and the bass drum are doing a fantastic job at keeping the, the beat going and giving a slight bounce to a song that otherwise would feel like a funeral march. <laughs> That vibrato that was wavering in that word uh, was giving off the idea that maybe the person performing the song was feeling rather emotional. It may be intentional, it may not be intentional. Let's say that it is intentional because the singer is performing using guidelines or instructions. So let's think that this is intentional. And even if it is, it's a really nice touch to, to give to a song that is quite long and that has to keep the same emotion throughout or at least resolve that emotion later on when the outro or the bridge arrive. That's an outstanding guitar solo that goes all the right places to make it so that those emotions that were building up up until now and that you were bottling up up until now will be unleashed. And the way the overdriven guitar solo r kicks off, builds up and lets everything go, pours it all over this song, it's quite amazing. And the way and how long the, the chorus goes uh, the chorus, how long this solo goes for is quite rare. Guitar solos for uh, say you artists' songs are usually 10 seconds. This one went for longer than that. And it is quite technical with quite a lot of variation going on and some rises in the, the tension and really, really playing along to the this, the feelings in the song, but giving an extra oomph to that performance. And when you get to the rest of the, or what is left of the song, you are already with quite the emotional blow dealt to you. <laughs> The 
the beat now to the, that I'm paying closer attention to the drums, the drums are almost shuffling, which is not expected. And it is a really nice touch the, that the beat is actually shuffling as the guitars are really going for that legato feel from start to finish, not leaving an empty space for you to breathe in. And the, the, the drums are actually leaving a space for you to breathe in. It's a, a smooth shuffle between the snare and the toms and the hi-hat. The drama and the urgency are back to wrap up this song. This is brilliant. This is... <sighs> I've said it a couple of times on Sayo Lounge's episodes that Takuya Sato is one of the most underrated singers among male Sayu. He had everything to shine in a solo career. And as you listened here in Hyokai, he had really everything to shine as a solo artist. Why didn't that happen? Why didn't that manage to continue to be a thing? Why did his solo career fail so much? I do not understand it. And if I was one of those people that had a lot of money, I would, without in a heartbeat, create a, a, a music label and bring him to revitalize his solo career. It's not fair that a singer as good as Takuya Sato and with as much emotion in these performances as Takuya Sato, doesn't get an opportunity to shine as a solo artist. Perhaps he doesn't want that again. Of course, we do not know it, but he was really on a good run and somehow things didn't work out at all. Um, some may say because of the massive solo debuts in 2017, it was all almost 8, 10 solo debuts in that year alone, much, much more than in the, the last six years together. So it is quite impressive how that year went on, but it's also really sad that some artists went under the, the, the radar because of that. And in this case, Frontier Works didn't put enough effort in his solo career because you've listened to him. Of course, Takuya Sato is now a different beast on the vocal end. He's a fantastic singer, a really insanely technical one, able to pull off falsetto, vibrato, head voice, breathy tones, everything you can think of, even harmonize. But he has been practicing a whole lot because he wants to impress in all the projects that he's a part of. Of course, that project, that solo project, didn't work. And it is a pity because he was really pumped up to perform as a solo artist and he was really invested in doing so and he was putting an effort in delivering really good songs. And if you go across his uh, repertoire, you do find awesome songs time and time again. It is a pity that, yet again, very few people know that he had a solo debut even when he was a solo artist, active one, and now even less people know that he had a solo debut, which is weird how he is being s slowly forgotten as a solo artist. So I try to make sure that he, that that memory is still alive. And thank you to ML for the suggestion, because Hyokai is a really good song. It reminds me a lot of Visual K, good Visual K from the early um, noughties, especially the Gazette. Kasi is a song that really shines and it has elements in the song, so it's really, really uh, a good one. It is a long song. It is 5 minutes and 20-something seconds. It's really, really long. Not many people will stick through a 30-second intro, even as good as it is, because usually, or nowadays, most people do not have that attention span. It is a pity because a song like this deserves to be enjoyed as you sit back 
and you are quiet. Of course, I I was not quiet because my job here is actually to comment the song and make you notice little details that are in these songs and in this case, in this specific song. But this is the type of song that I would enjoy to listen to again uh, without having to comment anything that is going on. Just let that sink in. This is that type of song. This is not a happy song, so if you do not enjoy songs that are really these much of a downer in terms of vibe, uh, this is not necessarily a good song for you to listen to. But if you enjoy these types of songs that have a really good uh, take on nostalgia and uh, longing, Hyokai is a good song for you to check. And yet again, Takuya Sato is a really awesome singer. So you get an opportunity to listen to him performing solo, Perhaps for you, it is the very first time that you are listening to him performing solo, not as a character, but as himself. So I hope you enjoyed it and that you actually give a second chance to his solo career, or at least a chance to his solo career and check his backlog of music. And of course, do show him love if you want to or if you feel like it, because he's a really, really awesome singer. And he puts a massive amount of effort in everything he does for his fans to smile. So this was my review of Hyokai, a song performed by Takuya Sato and a suggestion by ML. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you guys soon.